Um, second order of business. What shall I call you, good sir? Gavin. Gavin. Nice to, yep. nice to speak to you with you, Gavin. My name's Kai. Um, no, honestly, I, I think I got off on the wrong foot. I mean, I just, I'm curious because, like, the whole thing isn't really talked about or there's no movement. Like, it's just, it's vague from where I, I'm from. I'm from Missouri. Okay. And like, it just doesn't seem like from what I've been able to learn. Um, okay. So first off, let's, let's, um, so we know what each other are talking about, right? We have to, we have to establish some like stuff, right? So we can, right. we can have a conversation, right? Uh, when you say thing, right? Like the, the, th <clears throat> the thing, what are we talking about? My thing is like the gay community and like, kind of like what they stand for, like what they're pushing in like a way. Like, that's why like, I like, I understood at first, like I was kind of against, cause like, I felt like, like here, like it, it like everyone, it, they put it like they push it in your face, but like, I don't know right from wrong myself. Can, can I, <clears throat> Can I juxtapose it or at least to give a historical comparison to yeah, maybe yeah. Go ahead. sort yeah, of go like, ahead. how do you feel about like the um, civil rights movement in America? Right. Like it was very like much broad. <clears throat> I feel like it's very broad. Okay. So speci <laughs> specifically black civil rights movements in the 1960s, okay. right? Very much in your face. Very yep. much about recognition, right? Yeah. All right. So it is often a necessary tactic and a necessary step of societal and political change that a marginalized, oppressed group has to go through in which they could be deemed by outsiders as, and I'm going to use a very specific word here, uppity. So like basically feeling accepted into like the like the nationalized world society. Yeah, in a way? being just okay. another one of the populace rather than being the gay guy, being the trans person. No, I don't. I don't. I don't well, mean to say that. I just well, don't I, know what to say. Well, like, no, it's no, no. Not it's, like a... <laughs> but it's to get over that you don't see me because oftentimes. Okay, look, there's two groups, right? There's the they actively hate me. Which you're not yep. in, clearly, yeah, right? No, that that dude who f fled out of the room, like, oh god, queers, <laughs> and fucking ran, right? That dude's that dude's closer to that team, right? But then there's the sort of what Martin Luther King Jr. referred to as the the, the problem with the white moderate, right? It, that there's the majority of the population. That while they may not have active malit feelings of malice, they don't care enough or they don't know somebody. It's not important enough of an issue to them that in the shadows of marginalization, some horrible shit happens. And so to throw off those shackles of marginalization, there requires a step in, uh, in sort of the activist form that requires very much an in-your-face attitude, right? Very, the, the, we're here, we're queer, get used to it step. Well, I, I, I agree with that to a certain extent, but I feel like there's people, you know, outside of larger cities. Like, I'm, like, right outside, well, a little bit away from St. Louis. Okay. And for me, and I know, you know, just people around me, you know, like what we see I don't know if it's just a media thing or like what it is. It just feels like it's shoved in your face. So then instantly, like, I feel like it, like that's how I feel. It's shoved in your face. Like it automatically makes me feel like not to like it. I would, I would, I would argue one, what several things. All right. Several points, right? One, what media is being consumed? Is very well, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm just talking about like Facebook, TikTok, like things okay, like that. Okay, so algorithmically driven media yes, that yes, is yes. designed to engage in um, outrage uh, platforming, right? 
we know um, what's the, the what's that book called? Anybody in chat? The the chaos algorithm or something? Uh, who's the guy that wrote that? Um, the basically there's a scientist that wrote a book on um, how those algorithms are literally designed to farm outrage. Right. So See, but like, like I'm not, I'm not saying like it's shoved in my face. Like I'm like, and I see chat, like, I like, it's not that do, I'm against it at all. I, like, I, I'm not, I just don't understand. And I think that's where people come from is because like, we don't understand. So the first thing we're going to go to is negativity. And like, so we don't like, if you were explaining it to the world, I think it'd be great. First, first off, if I can make a, a single request, chaos machine, thank you, cupcake. Um, ignore chat. <laughs> just, no, you're fine. Just ignore them. Um, but like second, um, these are similar to the feelings that many white people had about black people during the civil rights movement. It, it, it echoes previous eras. It also echoes eras beyond that. I'm just using that as the most recent touchstone because that's what most Americans, but I could easily talk about um, the labor movement. I could talk about the suffrage movement. I could talk about indigenous rights movements. All of these have echoes of, they have the ripples of this exact same sentiment where there is a moderate majority that feels put off because something is being asked of them, whether it's simply accepting, acknowledging, or now, now they have to learn some new terms or they have to like, you know, that sort of thing, right? It, accepting, it, accepting change. A lot of people don't like change. Yes. Change is, it's change scary. is a very, it's, and, and, yeah. <laughs> it, and also like, I'm, you know, I'm 40. Like I do, there have been times where like fucking it, it's goddamn zoomers, right? It's like, what's the word now? Right. I can't even keep up sometimes with my own movement, right? The, what, when I came up, sexual preference was the preferred term, right? That shit's out. Preference indicates that there is a choice to be made. Therefore, it leads down a negative pathway that somebody could, a bad faith actor, could take advantage of in a conversation. See the Christian right talking about lifestyle choices, right? So now they avoid sexual preference as a term. That was the term my entire fucking life. And then I learned one day just on a dime that, oh, no, that, that term's fucking out, dude. Like, we don't say that anymore. Right. So I understand the sort of the, the impulse of like, God damn it. <laughs> so I'm, so I'm 20. So I was born in 98. I'm 25. Oh, you were young. You're 40. Yeah. So I'm young, but like, really, I, I honestly don't, I, I can't even say vaguely. Like it was never like, I mean, I don't like, is it, if I use the word gay, like, cause that's what I know. Like there wasn't even like introduced to me until like I was out of high school, like later on, like till recent events that I even, I guess, acknowledge, which sounds bad, but like, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know anybody in high school, really. I mean, I mean, I'm a, I'm a millennial. I'm the eldest millennial that can happen. Uh, dude, somebody just timed out cupcake. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so, uh, cupcake, I salute you. Um, Fucking, or somebody could untime him out since he does most of our heavy lifting. Um, I, dude, I'm an elder millennial. Do you know how much, fuck, how, how many times we called people gay? Oh, yeah, dude. I, you've, you've been through some, I don't know if we can cuss, but you've been through some shit. Oh, like, you do. Yeah. I yes. guarantee it, dude. Um, you're, the, you're, you're 40. You have been through some, yes. some hate. Like, you've been through it all. Yes. I, I, I am old enough to have realized the Reagan era actual genocide. So of my I'm people. trying to understand. So I don't know. I don't know if this is for me or just in general or for what, but I'm trying to understand. Like, I don't, I like, that's all I can say is like, I'm trying to understand. Like when I came in here, like I was trying to voice my opinion, but like, I just felt like I was attacked, but like, I'm not against it at all. Like I'm not, like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not against it. That's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not for it. I'm not against this it. Is, like, I'm just like in the middle because I don't know anything about it. Yeah. This is, this is very much, um, MLK's letter from a Bir Birmingham jail. Um, 
territory. And if you'll you'll indulge me, I'll just read you a uh, yeah yeah go, a, go, a, go ahead, go just ahead. A, a little chunk um, that is generally. Um, <clears throat> I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. First, I must confess that over the past few years, I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action, who paternalistically believes he can set the timetable for another man's freedom, who lives by a mythical concept of time and who constantly advises the Negro to wait for a more convenient season. Shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will. Lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection. Uh, I mean, dude, that it's like <clears throat> that speech right there is just absolutely amazing because, but who's it's the people who hear it. It depends how they want to perceive it. And I believe that like I, I read a lot of books. I do a lot like, and like it, like me, like you reading that, like it just makes me smile from fucking ear to ear because it's amazing. Like that speech right there is so amazing. And if if we would just all to get together, it'd be great. But I just don't understand the conflict. I don't understand the the conflict is that the, I think conflict. I, well, no, no, no. Go, I, th- I, I want to say conflict was a bad word. I don't want to use the word conflict. It's not a conflict. No, I, 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 I will, I'll side on conflict? that. Yes. Oh okay. yeah, absolutely. I don't. Um, okay. So I am old enough to remember the Christian right. Um, who, I mean, cause you're, you're 25. So like there's, and you're new to the channel. So there's a lot of ground to cover that I've covered on this channel with people. Like I could just shorthand this with some of us, right, but first yeah. off, like you have to understand the deal with the devil that was made with the Reagan administration and between the like fiscal conservative, right? The, 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 what we consider like a classical Republican in this nation and the Christian right in this country. They the the fact that they are melded into this weird demonic entity today is not always a it hasn't always been a thing. And that ha- I don't I don't I don't I honestly don't believe there's Democrats or Republicans right now. I think it is just it, it's it's fucking it's chaos. Mm, we'll we'll circle back to that if we have time. Okay. <laughs> um but That entity was created under Reagan. Now, under the Reagan administration is when the HIV crisis happens. This is when the AIDS crisis happens, right? Now, the Republicans, the conservative right, the Christian orthodoxy, the Southern Baptist Convention, right? In that moment, they cheered. I'm not I'm not talking hyperbolically I'm not talking metaphorically I'm talking actual pieces in news in newsprint about them cheering God's solution to homosexuality right that this was the final solution delivered from on high for the homosexual this was, problem this is the, this was this is the 80s um okay. but this went all the way through and this is what like anybody your age Never saw because we basically spent the better part of the mid mid nineties to the mid aughts fighting back because they from like oppression like they like, actively like, like, wanted us dead. They still do. They still do. They're, why? Because we don't fit into their model of the universe. Like a social agenda or what? I mean, there is there are those that see us as an aberration uh, from a religious or uh, naturalistic standpoint, which, I mean, the naturalistic standpoint is completely incorrect. The gay uncle theory is probably the most prevailing, uh, the most uh, prevalent theory for uh, why homosexuality exists within the genome because it keeps occurring across all of animalia. 
Um, but they see us in, as an aberration. And what's that? What's the definition of aberration? Something that shouldn't is something that is different that shouldn't exist. Why? Um, because their magic homosexual has been around for yeah, we, literally thousands of years. It's been around always, just always, yeah. just just always. It it exists in um like I forget how many like species it's been observed in at this point. We're probably pushing four hundred or something like that at this point. Biologists have managed to observe homosexual activity and behavior uh, up to and including partnering. Um, and so like yeah, it it, it it's it's just always been. And it is a part of the uh, naturalistic phenomena, but they don't see science. They, they, as in world. Generally, they, as in religiously minded majority, individuals. Um, majority population. Type yeah, deal. this this okay. nation is very much. Um, it has a it has a religion problem. Oh yeah, for I mean that's yes. For okay, sure. that informs a lot of this because secular society tends not to. Also, conservatism. Secular. Okay, I got a question. Secular. What does that mean? Uh, like it, you're. Per- there's a. It's the firewall. Okay, so you have religiously informed society, and secular yeah. is the other side where we go. No, our laws and rules aren't created or governed so by religious. Religious just being like Christian or Catholic, like saying like basically gays would go to hell, like type deal. Yes. Or no. Oh yeah, they okay. absolutely do. Like so they, then they secular, so then secular, secular is accepting. Uh, they tr- and- they trend that direction because they don't have the dogmatic underpinnings that the religious groups do. Now they don't necessarily okay. have to, and you could look at an instance like Stalinistic Russia, who's very uh, in at least in name atheistic. Now. In practice, that's a whole other ball game, and that's. I'm a- pretty sure if you're gay in Russia, you can go to prison. Uh, well, they, just for being gay. Putin definitely now these days, but it back then as well, and that usually has to do with the paternalistic nature of con- uh, conservatism. Um, men tend to be uncomfortable with homosexuality because they see it as an unknown just in the same way that men tend to be a uh, heterosexual cisgendered men tend to be uncomfortable at some level around women because they don't understand them so would you would you say not being unknown would you see would you compare that as a weakness or would you defend that uh, asking, like not saying not 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 saying it's a weakness, but do you think that it stems like like if I was homosexual, like not I don't know the word for like fearful or like a weakness, like like I don't want to express myself because yeah of other people. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's what being oh, in yeah, the closet yeah. is about. Okay. Like being in the closet. When did I, I, I'm presuming. I hate that. I hate that. Fu- I hate okay, that. Well, but being, I hate it. <laughs> I, I'm presuming you are a white cisgendered heterosexual male, right? You, you just, I, didn't, I don't know what all okay, that is. So but. <laughs> you're just, you're just a white dude who knows he's a dude and you like chicks, right? Yep. Cool. All right. So when did you have to tell your parents that you liked girls? See, and that's what I was saying earlier, and that's where I felt like I was being attacked because when I was saying, like, I feel like just like religion or anything else, how you are raised has a big impact on your further life decisions after you become of age. Now, I'm not going to sit here and debate of age, when age should be, when you should decide, or when, like, I'm not going to do that, but, like, I don't like, I I believe there's a huge impact. Like, let's say I grew up in a very non, like, like we don't like gays. Like we think it's an abomination, blah, 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 which I wouldn't. I grew up in foster care. So it's, it's pretty open. And that's why I actually, I'm kind of curious because like, I don't understand like me, myself, I don't understand. There is. I got kids and everything else. Like I don't, but then you made a very good point of why I was like, I don't want my kids to learn about this. But then you made a very good point with that K 
kids that don't know are more sexualized or yeah, they don't or anything else. And that, and, and, but that, I don't know that. You know what I mean? I didn't come in here trying to be a dickhead or not. Oh, that's but again, but, like okay, so we're we're an abrasive community, but it, think of it like um, you ever hung out with like the bros on the football team, sort of thing, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so you got to earn your stripes, right? Right. Like you're yeah. not, you're not going to just walk into the locker room and not get away without. Like, right. Some, right. Right. right? Yeah, okay. Okay. I understand. Exactly. I understand. Right. Like that's very much the, I mean, I took the heat. I mean, I came on the air. I mean, and I'm just like, respect, I, I, respect. I just, it just felt attacked. And, and I'm and like, you that's were, not you how were, it is. You were being it's attacked. Not how it is. That is, you were being attacked. <laughs> Your feelings are valid on this. And also their attack was valid. Like that's sort of the function. But I felt like, serves. like, and like you said, like, what did you call it? Like on the voice, like voice. What'd you call it? Text. Oh yeah. 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 You'll never be able to properly express yourself or defend yourself textually. So why don't you come and talk vocally? I like that. Textually. (laughs) Um, so like, yeah, no, that's, there is, there is functionally no evidence outside of like that weird, like, you know, when Christians come up with like, I have evidence and you look into it and it's like some dude who molested his daughter and you're like, that dude wrote a paper on why you shouldn't do sexual education. It's like, you realize he's the reason you need sexual education, right? It's always that kind of bullshit that you're dealing with. Yeah, There's it's always functionally see, no evidence. I don't see any fact that, that so I'm not going to get into real, I'm, I'm like big religious on stuff. Like I don't believe someone on the other side of the earth should go to hell because they don't believe in Christianity or like vice versa. Like, you know, like all that, like I'm not like sectioned to one religion. Like I'm an open religion. Like if you believe, I'm not going to say if you, I'm going to say if you believe in something and like that, and that's the only thing you've ever been taught, how are you ever going to know any different? So I'm not going to say you're going to go to hell because you're not a Christian or a Catholic or this or that. I'm not going to say if you're gay or this or that, like you're going to go to hell. Like, no, there's a difference between good people and bad people. I'm not going to say all straight guys are good people. All gay guys are good people. All whatever you want to say. I don't believe I just don't believe in that. But I'm also very undereducated and. That's why I came in here because I'm just trying to learn. It is honestly, I'm just trying to learn. We are a group that historically and contemporarily group group as in defining, LG, LGBT plus. Let's just okay. let's let's put the everything but the the hetero cisgender sort of territory, right? The the sort of the what admittedly is the majority, right? Nobody's trying to claim like otherwise, but um, some may, but I can't account for them. Um, but like the sort of LGBT groups historically for most of the sort of Western society, because Western, Western society, okay. Has, but there's, 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 that's a, that's again, a broad spectrum. Uh, it very much is. And I'm, I'm, I am doing broad intentionally in this instance oh, okay, due, okay. due to the fact of the biblical influence and I'm not even going to say biblical, but due to the Abrahamic influence, right? Because this this transcends just Christianity, so Judaism. The Abraham. Or, okay, so Abrahamic that. is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam together. Yeah, all three of them. The the fucking trilogy. All three of them. Well, if we all ex- if that was if that was great, we'd all be great, huh? <laughs> no, um, they're horrible no? ideologies. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but like. It, all three of them have historically and contemporarily problems with relating to women, with relating to the LGBT community, with relating to non-ethnic ma- uh, majorities, right? If you're, a, if you're an ethnic minority amongst them, chances are you're going to get enslaved. If you're a woman, chances are you're going to functionally be a slave, if you're LG, LGBT, chances are you're going to get killed, like outright. Um, there, those groups have a very complicated interaction with the LGBT community. Now, given the influence of the Christian right in America, we have a very complicated in, uh, history with America. 
And so that that spans everywhere. Like being gay in fucking Saudi Arabia is a nightmare, right? Like it, there's there's places where this you know is different on the spectrum. And while I can be openly gay in America, there are places in America where you do not want to be openly gay, and it is an actual health hazard for you to be so. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, oh for sure. So yeah. like that's what we live with is like an actual existential threat to our existence as a person because of what I'm telling you is m l just literal for me. Do you remember um when you decided to like girls? You don't, right? Cuz it's not a thing you did. You just do. Yeah, it's, it's almost it's it Almost, just is. You know, it's a natural instinct. It just is, right? For me. Yeah. You know, like that's what it feels like. It's you just chased natural. you chased the girls around the playground, right? You, yeah, you oh, knew. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I chased the boys. I knew. See, see, but I'm gonna tell you right here. Back in what preschool, kindergarten, what year you gonna call it, like to me. Like, that would have been weird if you would have chased boys or like the only thing I ever knew was boy, girl. See, and you know but I mean? that's because of that lack of early life sexual education. You then enter a, a spiral, a, a system of mild abuse leading up to really fucked up levels of abuse that drive teenage LGBT suicide rates through the roof. Because, but it makes sense what you said earlier. So if we how, if we engage at that lower level, at that sort of first, second, third grade, because the Dutch do third grade. If you're wondering, I advocate for starting in the third grade because that's where the science says it works. That's that's where I write that. That's I mean, but but like you make a good case. Like I want to agree with you, but I don't. You see, and it's because of your. I, I'm going to use a word, but, but it, like, it's just like, it's, it, I, I have three kids you, and like, I, like they're pushing, they're pushing. They're not third grade yet. <laughs> they're all under third grade, but like, like that's, that's, that's the problem. They should because have like, what, I, I think it's you, more of a fear for me because it's a yep. change mm -hmm. and we all know change is fear. May change I, is fear. Something different is fear. May I ask, um, boys, girls, two boys, one girl. What if one of the boys is gay? I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. Okay. Honestly. Okay. So perfect. You wouldn't give a shit if one of your, you just want him to be healthy and happy, right? You want Correct. the best for that kid, right? But I don't, I don't want it shoved in his face. That, well, but and, and I'm not, I'm not saying that but, you are. I'm just again, saying in general, I feel like the overall social community shoves it in people's so, But here's face. the thing. Do you, have you ever sat back to think about how much heterosexuality is shoved in a gay kid's face. No, I mean, that's kind of why I'm sitting back now. Well, I'm but like, to think, think, you know if, what I mean? think if one of your sons is gay and as I'd he, be pissed off as he comes up of age, right? He's going to, his friends are like feeling things about girls, but he feels them about his friends. He's, and then he He's feeling confused and, and afraid. Yeah, like, no. Nah. And everywhere he looks in society, you you take him to a movie and the prince kisses the princess. Right? Everything around him is geared the other direction. And he feels alone. He feels he's wrong for some reason. That everything around him is telling him what he is experiencing. This completely natural feeling is incorrect and he is wrong for feeling it. All of society does that to him just by default. The media just defaults to it. So those instances uh. where you see us or it or the programs or the education quote, shoving it in their face, it is one or two instances in a sea of heterosexuality being shoved in those kids' faces. Okay. You may, and that, that's why I like you, because you, you, you actually make a good point. Most people that, it, it, 
like that's what I was saying. Like if if we would have had you as PR, legit PR, like it would have been fucking great because like you actually care about the details. You backed it up with facts. Like it, like it all makes sense, and that's why I like it. That's why I like you. That's why I'm on here. Like that's why I am here. Well, thank you. And I understand, like your learned condition, right? Your learned experience. What do you What do you call that? What do you What do you call that? Like with how you're raised? Like, is there a word for that? Like how you're. There's a variety of terms you could apply. Your lived experience, your conditioning, your environmental res- uh, experience. There's a variety. I don't. Of- I don't. I don't like conditioning at all. <laughs> I, lived experience is probably the one I like. <laughs> There's also indoctrination. But like uh, that's another thing though. Like you could you could put like everything that's all them you can put. I feel like together with you know how you were brought up. But like and, and I understand how that I I lived all over this country, right? I was born in New England. I was born in Vermont, but I've, you know, I spent time in the deep south. I've spent time out here in the uh, southwest and west coast. I've by oh, man, I by, love by that. age dope. 19, I had visited all 48 contiguous states, right? Um I I'm very well aware of the American experience as it were. Um and I grew up rural and I've lived in big city. I know the differences between the two, right? I know that it's not just a northern or southern divide that oftentimes it is an urban versus rural divide more than anything else, right? And I know the differences of those experiences. And I understand what it means to be schooled in that, that the, the growing up in it and just having that be your, what we would call a normative experience, right? This is just how it was for you every day of your life. And now you're confronted with something else and you're doing it with the best of intentions because, well, frankly, because of a biological switch that went off in your head. Um, you, you know, that's, I mean, that the reality of the situation is parenthood does a number on a motherfucker, right? Um, so because that switch got flipped in your head, you're now looking at these little fucking munchkins that you want the best for. Yeah. And you don't nec- I like that. I like that term of fucking munchkins because that's what they are. You don't, and, but you don't know what's best, right? Right. And, and you're, no one does. And we so just do our best, all but we do our best of what our knowledge is. And, and that's why I myself, I would, I would encourage you one. Um, we can give you the link. Uh, you can check the sources yourself. But like I said, that there is a plethora of study on this matter that the younger you can teach those kids that there are differences in gender in sex and sexuality, the younger that you can teach them that they have bodily autonomy, the younger that you can teach them that the differences in those things between other people and themselves are to be respected, the better outcome not only your children have, but the children around them have. You will actively make the world a better place for some other kid who's suffering because you raised your kids right. And that's the... See, that's, that's what I'm saying, dude. You're like, you're like, it's so... Like, I love information. I love knowledge. And like, like the way you say it and like the way you put it, like I can see how you have an audience just because like, it's so understanding and like, like, yeah, like, no, I completely agree. That's where I'm getting at. Like I, like it's like for some people it wouldn't be basic. It wouldn't be like ignorance to like, we, I just don't know. Like if you, like if I went next door, they would have no fucking idea. You know what I mean? Like, this is not, like, it's not like a door-to-door taught the type deal. best thing that I can say is when that, uh, Hoodster, thanks for the follow. The best thing I can say is that when that permission slip comes home for sex for ed. For what? For sex ed. Oh. oh, okay. You sign the fuck out of that thing. 
because the reality is that the, in the same way that you are probably not equipped to teach your kids advanced algebra or British literature or world geography, you're probably not equipped to actually teach them sex, sexual education either. And there is a reason that we have people who teach this and that you opt into that, that you advocate for that and that you use this experience right here that we're having. And when you hear somebody push back with a similar experience to yours, where they have that ick recoil, where they have that, I don't want my kids exposed to that recoil. You can use this moment and be like, I was there, brother. I understand exactly what you're saying because I was exactly like you. I know exactly where you're coming from. I know exactly what you're feeling right now. And let me break it down for you like it was broken down for me. Because if your kids don't be a dick to some little gay boy, even if your two boys turn out straight and the girl turns out straight and everybody's cisgendered, right? If your kids are the one that puts their arm around that gay kid and says, it's okay, right? In that fucked up moment where somebody's picking I mean, that, on them. That's what I would expect. Then your kids could save that kid's life. Like for real, for real. Suicide rates amongst LGBT youth are incredibly high because of that lack of societal acceptance. Because we don't see the figureheads because we are demonized. And that's why it's important for gay people to be loud and proud and out there. Because we know what it was like to grow up not seeing gay people. Or the only time we're seen is when we're the butt of the joke. Rather than somebody with power. Somebody who's respected. Somebody who's intelligent. Somebody who's capable. Somebody who's accepted by society. Without that representation, kids languish in fear. They languish in this nebulous place of uncertainty. And I'll be honest with you, that's where kids end themselves. Because they don't feel they have a place to belong. And it happens a lot to a lot of kids. But it happens to a lot more LGBT youth than it does heterosexual youth. And it's because of that still continued fight for acceptance. And so that's why we have to teach them young. Because the adults are often a lost cause. A, a 67, 72-year-old boomer, right, who is convinced that queers are the foot soldiers of the devil is not going to be an easy conversation. That's not going to be a dude I can change in the course of, you know, an exchange. That's a dude who's probably pretty set in his ways. So the change comes from those youth. And so that's why it's super important. We teach them these things. It's why mm -hmm. early life sexual education matters and saves lives. That's what I, was, I mean, that's what I was agreeing with. Like, I, I didn't come in here expecting to agree with you or disagree with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like, I was, I voiced my opinion, attacked, whatever, you know, kind of got a, like, I obviously, you got a good community, a lot of good people. And it's just, I don't, I don't like wrong from right to me is like, I just, I just don't know. And that's, like, I just felt like it had been good for me to come in here and learn and understand the, and see your perspective versus my perspective, which, I mean, I have a very open perspective probably than most of the people around me or whatever, but... Uh, well, we can provide you with links, uh, a long list, but the science is in on this matter. It, it is. So if you... I can't speak for Magic Sky Daddy, um, but 
if you want your kids to receive an education that is grounded in the best possible scientific knowledge we have today um, and the, you know, uh, peer-reviewed outcomes therein, um, then I can tell you with a high degree of certainty that early life sexual education is a net positive for your kids and society. And there are large scale tests that have in, uh, occurred at a net like nation state level that have data to back this up. Um, so that's sort of the position. And m as I said, most parents are not equipped emotionally to have the degree of conversation in the ways that are necessary and understanding the nuance of how to talk to a third grader versus a fifth grader versus a seventh grader sort of thing. And so that's why having sex ed teachers is so important. And as I said before, frankly, statistically, if we're just talking numbers, the person who's going to diddle that kid is a relative. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I like that. I like that. I like the speech that you gave about putting your arm, dude, because it doesn't. Well, I've but, always, I grew up on the lesson. It doesn't cost anything to be nice. Those kids like, I like do that. need protecting. I like that. They do oh, yeah, need protecting. I, I agree because but, they're going to be bullied. Like, well, I, don't, no, I don't care what you say, need, what I say. They need I mean, protecting from their own family oftentimes. Because oh, yeah, the statistical li likelihood of a child being molested by someone outside their family is very low. <laughs> But the statistical likelihood of a child who is molested increases greatly with their own family members. And so teaching that child in a public secular school system that they do have bodily autonomy, that it is wrong for someone to touch them in that way, that their feelings are valid, will go, will just do so much, so much service to protecting those kids from the people who are most likely to actually abuse them. See, and that's, that's, I mean, that's why I'm on here. Like that, that statement right there, like what you said when I was still in like chat and stuff, like that's, that's why I came on here because it's, it's blatantly true. I mean, almost everything you say is just blatantly true. Like there's no, like I don't have an argument for you. Like it is, just blatantly truth. Well, um, and that's, and I'm not going to say that's the sad part, which it is the sad part because I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Well, use it and move forward with it, right? Use it as a point of change. Use this as the catalyst. Um, but, um, I will, if you don't mind, I'm going to wrap up the conversation here. Um, but you followed. You're welcome in community. You're on the Discord server. You can. We have voice chats. We have. I'm on five days a week. Um, so you can come by anytime, and we can further these conversations. <laughs>